one of the tasks that you need to stay on top of as a developer is upgrading to the latest framework. Letting your application slip behind is a sure way to make your life difficult in the future. When we built the suggestion site app, we used .NET 6. Now that .NET 7 is out, we have the option to stay on the LTS branch, that's a long-term support branch, until .NET 8, or upgrade to .NET 7, which is on the STS branch, or the, the short-term or standard-term support branch. In this video, we're going to upgrade to .NET 7 to take advantage of the new features and speed improvements. This will also make our upgrade to .NET 8 even easier in the future. Now, before we get started, there are three things you need to know. First, if you want to improve your C-sharp skills, you should subscribe to my channel. With over 450 videos on C-sharp and counting, this is a place to learn C-sharp. Second, if you like free C-sharp resources, go to www.imtimcorey.com and click on the resources tab. There you'll find my podcast, the C-sharp projects page, and a lot more. Third, if you need a deep education on a C-sharp topic, I have dozens of courses to help you out. Not only will you be getting a world-class education, but you'll also be helping to fund my free content so that everyone can have a great education in C-sharp, not just those who can afford it. Now, this video is a continuation of a playlist. So if you have not already watched the suggestion site playlist, that might be the place to start. However, if you just wanna see how we upgrade from .NET 6 to .NET 7, you can jump right in the middle. Now. Unlike normal videos, this is not one of those videos where I'm going to share my source code. The source code for this comes with the paid course, but I put all the videos here on YouTube for free because of my partnership with MongoDB. So again, thank you to MongoDB for providing the, that free content. So here is the source code for the suggestion site. Now it's not huge, but we have, uh, we have a Blazor server app in our suggestion app UI, we have a class library, and that's pretty much it. There's there's not a ton here, which means this is a small application. It's not a, a medium or large application, but it's at least a, um, a decent size and in operation application. And if you haven't already seen a suggestion site, let me bring it up here. This is the suggestion site. So we have here a list of, hey, you want to, you know, ask for something new. You want to see some new video on a course or a dev question or a 10 minute training or an in-depth tutorial. Go ahead and ask for it here. There's already 426 suggestions. There's been even more that have been completed that I've taken off this list, but this is a suggestion site. And if you look through here, there's a lot of great suggestions that are coming in future videos. But we want to upgrade this site to .NET 7. Currently, it's in on .NET 6. So what we're going to do is we're first going to make sure this runs on our machine. We've got the, the .NET 6 version, but it's always a good thing to start by verifying your application is running. Because if your application doesn't run, then you don't know if the changes you made caused the problem or if it didn't run to begin with. So yes, it runs. And yes, we have six suggestions here. So we've got a bunch of suggestions that are on here just as test. This is our test site, our test database. Um, so you'll find a lot of testing stuff here, but this works. All right. So we know that it works. We know that it runs and, um, you know, we can now look at what it's going to take to upgrade this site to .NET 7. Okay. So to upgrade .NET 7, there's only a couple things you need to do to start off with. Now, I, there are upgrade tools and you can check and do all kinds of validation, but here's the validation that I like to do. I like to just upgrade and then see if anything breaks because the tools don't always work right and they might not get everything and you're still not sure if it's going to work or not. And we have, we use Git, we use Git source control. So the idea of rolling back a change, no big deal. So how do you upgrade a .NET 7? Well, you select your projects. And where it says .NET 6, you say .NET 7. You save that and you go to the other project. Where it says .NET 6, you say .NET 7. And technically, I'm done. And in fact, if I were to run this right now, let's make sure it runs. Notice it's building under .NET 7. Let's wait for it to launch. Make sure it launches. 
And that's one of the important things is making sure that your changes work. Um, it works. So it works. We can, we can see, we can add suggestions. We can go to my profile. We can go to the admin page. There's nothing that, to administrate. Um, we can, we can filter, we can sort. This is where it would be nice to have um, unit testing and some integration testing. We don't have that in this project. That would be nice to have that to verify and validate instead of me doing this manually. But, um, and that's one of the reasons why it's so important to have those, but in this project we don't. So we have to do it kind of manually, but it works. So that's all there was to upgrade the .NET 7. Now, again, this is a smaller application. You might say, well, Tim, that's just totally unrealistic. There's got so much more stuff. No, not really. That's the upgrade process to .NET 7. Where you're gonna have some problems is if there are, first of all, breaking changes to your code, and you can look at the what breaks between .NET 6 and .NET 7, and there's nothing that affects this application. But the other place you're gonna have to concern yourself is all your dependencies. And this is why I always say that you got to find that balance between taking dependencies and building your own. Because when you take a dependency, you're dependent on it to be able to support a newer version of .NET, where if you build your own, you're in control. But if you build your own, you're putting in all that effort to build it, and that can be very expensive. So there is a balance there. But while we're doing the upgrade, we are gonna look at our dependencies and specifically we're gonna look at the updates. Now notice that we already have updates for .NET from .NET 6 to .NET 7 for a lot of packages. That makes sense. And so we are gonna upgrade these because these, even though they're major version updates, they go with .NET 7. Now these other two are minor version updates. So they should not have breaking changes. You still need to verify and validate, but they should not have breaking changes. So, and one other thing, if you're following along and you had purchased a course, you've got the source code out and you're doing it along with me, uh, just note that you won't have SendGrid because this is something I add after the course. Personally, this is not something I recorded, it's not something I put in the course, but this is something I added later to um, allow the system to email you when your suggestion is accepted or completed and so on. But I figured that'd be important to know, hey, you know, you've got an update to your suggestion. So let's do this. Let's say select all packages and upgrade or update. We accept. And then we're gonna go to do the same thing for our dependencies on the UI project. And again, there's some two Microsoft packages have been updated. They're minor version updates though. And there's a, uh, a revision update for the Azure extension. Sarah Long does have a major update and uh, Seek has a minor update. We are gonna upgrade both of these as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rebuild the solution. Just make sure the whole thing it builds it does. We're going to run this. There we go. Wait for it. It all works. So that was the entirely painless process to upgrade to .NET 7 from .NET 6. This is one of the reasons why I say that the upgrade process is super easy, especially compared to what we used to have with .NET Framework. Now, again, if you have a massive application with thousands of dependencies and all these other things, it can be a lot trickier. But the actual process of upgrading an application from .NET 6 to .NET 7 is a matter of changing a number and verify that you don't have any breaking changes with the c -sharp code. Those are the two things you have to do. Again, the big issue is going to be your dependencies. So if your dependencies have a problem, then you have a problem. And it may be you have to wait until a dependency is updated or maybe even change out your dependency if that becomes an issue. And we could do that. So let's just say that um, Sarah Log did not support .NET 7. Well, then we can swap out our, our um, dependence on for something else, which normally is a big deal. But if you go to register services down here, um, it's in the, the logging in here. Um, we'd swap it out. 
actually, I think it might be in program.cs for this one. So um, right here, use Serilog. So we swap that out for something else if it was not compatible with uh, .NET 7. And that's all we'd have to do in order to swap over to using a different logging system. This is why dependency injection is so important because swapping out dependencies should be a less painful way of doing things than say going through every part of your application and changing out your logging. So that's another reason why when you create these loosely coupled applications, you have an easier time when it comes to upgrading them. So that's it. That is the upgrade process to .NET 7. Now, I will probably personally, not necessarily on camera, but I'll probably personally go through here and make some code changes based upon the new things that came out with .NET 7, the new improvements. There may be some things that I could do better because it is .NET 7, but otherwise, um, I'm done at this point and I have all the benefits as far as the speed improvements of .NET 7 and um, any new features that come along with it that are just already ready for me to use. And now I just need to take advantage of them when I want to. Okay, that was it. That's the entire video. I just wanted to kind of show you what that process looks like for a real application. Now for me, the way I deploy this is that I will go through the process of of pushing it to main and then to staging and then to pre-production and then finally swapping it over to production. But part of that process, and let's open up VS Code here because this is gonna make it a little easier. Part of that process is my GitHub Actions. And I have three of them. And in here, they're gonna fail if they try and do the update now because .NET Core version. Well, I'm gonna change that to seven. Dot o dot x. And that's now all I need to do in order to make my, my build process ready to build these for .NET 7, okay? So now the build process update as well. I just commit this code, I push it up to main, it's gonna build, it's gonna put it on my dev server, and then I can push it out to staging and then pre-production. And then once it's in pre-production, -pre I will swap it over and I will ha have this as the result. Now, I know this because this is already running .NET 7. I actually already did this before. I just rolled back the changes and did them again to show you on video. So this is running .NET 7. If you have any other questions about upgrading .NET 7, if you wanna see other content around it, uh, maybe it's a suggestion. You wanna leave a suggestion site, go to suggestions.imtimcorey.com. If you have a suggestion for how to tweak this site, just so we're clear here, this site is about training suggestions, not about suggestions for tweaking this site. If you wanted to tweak this site, then I have a, a separate uh, place for that. So github.com slash I am Tim Corey. And on here, there is a site issues. So site issues, if you want to leave in issues around the site, whether it's uh, bug fix or bugs that you want to report or whether it's suggestions for new features, whatever it is, you can leave those as issues in this list and I will look at them and potentially address them in the future. So that's where you suggest any like fixes for any of my sites or any of the things that I do. But if you want new video content or new training content, this is the place to leave that suggestion. That's suggestions.imtimcorey.com. Okay, so thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.